Hello designers, in today's tutorial you'll learn how to design this vintage text illustration using Adobe Illustrator in just a few steps. Since I was looking for a font to start this with, I've partnered up with Heritage Type as they have a bundle called the Vintage Font Bundle, which includes some amazing fonts and individual elements that allow you to put something that looks professional out in just a matter of minutes. If you're interested in checking it out, the link is in the description of this tutorial and don't forget to use the coupon code COSMIN to get 10% off your purchase at checkout. Now that you are in Illustrator, first thing, start by placing a text element and writing in your phrase. Mine is pretty meta as you can see, two words on top of each other saying Illustrator Tutorial. I'm going to use the font called Royal Signage and it already looks way better than Media Pro for what we're trying to do. Right click and create outlines and now it's time to stylize it a bit. Start by adding a shape for the background, double click on the field to change its color. I'm going to go with a complementary color scheme of a dark blue with a light orange for this particular type of illustration. From the layers panel make sure to lock that layer up and with the text group selected apply a different color from the swatches panel. Make a copy and paste it in front as I like to create an outline while keeping the initial text elements untouched. Switch the stroke color to orange and send it behind before increasing its size. Try to increase it enough so you'll have some overlap with some other letters. Go to object, hit expand. Make sure to have both the fill and stroke selected and hit OK. For the next part, I'll try to make the whole collection of paths one object. First, apply a single color to it and then go to the Pathfinder window and hit Merge. Double click to enter the group and with the magic wand, select all of the orange shapes and while holding down the shift key, make a selection of all of the empty paths. What do I mean by empty paths? Well, like the one inside this A for example. Once that's done, exit the group and while holding down the ALT key make a duplicate at the top layer, send it behind everything, sample the orange color from the stroke and actually make the stroke the same color as the background. This is a simple way to make your text stand out, but we'll try to move to a more unique style. With the stroke selected, make a copy of it and paste it in front, and then apply the orange on top of it. Zoom in, and let's make a duplicate of that stroke but drop it down at a 45 degree angle, just like casting a shadow. Then with both shapes selected go to Object and find the Blend option and hit Make. This will create an intermediary between the two, but for this effect to look right we need to make adjustments. Go to Object, Blend and select Blend Options. Change the specified steps to 30 in order to have a smoother transition between the two and expand everything. Hit Merge to complete the look. And once we zoom out, we can send that element behind the stroke outline. Now we'll need to create a couple outline paths that will fill the shape we just defined as the shadow and give us a vintage look. For the color of the stroke, let's stick with white, increase it to somewhere around 2 points and make an initial copy using the key and replicate it by hitting Command or Control D. With all of the strokes selected, go to Object, hit Expand. And now we need to send this to the back so we can create a clipping mask out of the shadow element. Double click inside it because we need to get rid of all of the empty pads just like before. This step is very important. Once you have a single fill to them, from the menu select object, find the compound pout option and hit make. Now select both the stroked outline and the shadow element and hit command 7 to create a clipping mask. Hit merge once that's been created and apply a different color to make it stand out. We'd like for these strokes to have a more unique look to them, so for that you can go to the gradient panel and apply a simple linear one that has orange on one end and the color of the background on the other. From there click and drag to create a gradation from the top left corner to the other side. To make sure the top layer stands out even more, let's create a copy of the stroke behind it and apply the orange color to it. Send it behind the dark one and that way you'll get an embossed look for your vintage type. We do have a lot of effects on the outside of the type, but let's create something on the inside as well. After making a copy of the top layer, start adding a stroke outline that has the background color applied and we can only see what's left inside these shapes. Looking to create a small element that follows along the profile of these letters. Once you have it, go to Object and expand them. Hit OK and from the Pathfinder window merge everything. Double click to enter the group and I only select the white parts and remove the rest. Afterwards, you can select what's left and apply an orange fill to it using the eyedropper tool. Right now, this is a bit too much, so with it selected, go to the transparency tab and lower it to somewhere around 40%. With the whole type selected, try and find the shear tool that we'll use to actually skew the whole group. If you can find it in the left panel, try to switch your workspace to Essentials Classic. 
Now part of the vintage type bundle you also get a lot of individual elements that you can use to ornate your type. These elements are all vectors that in my opinion give your illustration a bit more personality. Of course I'm going to sample the orange color and apply it to all of them in order to have a consistent color scheme and once that's done I'm going to move forward and apply a bit of texture as well. Let's go to unsplash.com and search for noise. From there I'll take an image to actually convert it to a vector noise texture. Paste it in and hit the image trace button from the top options bar and open up the tracing options. I would recommend using a high threshold value and a low noise vol uh, value. In order to actually use it, you'll have to expand this image, double click to enter the newly formed group and only leave the white dots visible. Select it and I usually sample the background color just to give it that extra grit that will make this vintage type illustration look a bit old and worn down. Now if you follow this tutorial this is the final result. Don't forget to like this video so more people can see it and subscribe for new ones. Take care everybody. Bye!